I'm Steve Etzler with BDI. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, it's a real pleasure to uh, welcome you to this event, the rise of UGC for e-commerce. And welcome to the great Bose Kitchen and Bar Room. So BDI, my company, and Pecora have been partnering for a few years now to put on events like this. Our goals are pretty straightforward and simple. Uh, we want to give you some good food, some great content, and have you meet some very good people. So really, those are our objectives today. The, uh, before we get started, I'd like to do a brief audience participation survey. So please raise your hand if this applies to you. Those who consider themselves new or beginners to this very interesting topic, the intersection between user-generated content and e-commerce. So the beginners in the room, please raise your hand. Okay, we have a few honest people. Intermediate levels of understanding. Those who know enough to be dangerous. Good. Advanced. Experts. Come on, know-it-alls. Panelists. Those from Pecora and our panelists, please raise your hands now. Okay. Those who work for a brand. Wow, most of the room. Agencies, a few you snuck in, okay. And media companies. All right, so mostly we have brands with a mix of some agencies and media companies as well. Who attended the first, well, there were actually two events that we've had here in the past. Who attended a, a prior event focused uh, on UGC with Pecora, and they're, and they're coming back for their second or third time? Please raise your hand. Welcome back. Everyone else is new. Thanks for giving us a, a chance. Our agenda is very straightforward and simple. Uh, we will have a panel discussion in just a, a couple minutes that we're going to kick off. And then if there's time at the end, we'll have what we call roundtable interactive discussion groups where we're going to hopefully be really inspired after the panel and then we'll bring the discussion back to our smaller groups. And I promise to have you out of here by 2 o'clock. So with that, I'd like to introduce your hosts and the two co-founders of Pakora, Sharad Verma, and Naveen Akunari. Gentlemen. By the way, we're supposed to use both mics, one for video and one for this. So, now thank you all of you for taking the time out of your busy schedules and joining us for our second uh, user-generated uh, content-focused event. Uh, as Steve said, you know, my name is Sharad. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders and CEO of Pecora, and this is, this is Naveen. Hi. <laughs> Uh, all right, so let, let, let's let's talk a little bit about UGC, right? So, you know, Naveen and I started the company with the mission of helping brands connect with consumers authentically. We think it's now possible, right? With with Instagram and consumers taking, you know, photographs and capturing real life moments, um, and, and really eating, drinking, and sharing photos. We think that we finally have a raw material which is highly, highly authentic. Um, and that, that, that authentic asset could be used in digital marketing, in content marketing, in e-commerce, uh, and, 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 and you know, paid, owned, earned, top funnel, bottom funnel, to really engage the consumer, right? So let's think about why do, I mean, we're, we're all here because to a certain extent we believe in, in the power of user-generated content. But let's look at it qualitatively and quantitatively as to why they work. So my view is that qualitatively, they are more engaged, you know, UGC photos are a lot more engaging, a lot more emotional, they communicate real life context, and more importantly, they communicate trust, which is, which is the currency that brands need to have with consumers. And quantitatively, we, you know, we've done some experiments on Instagram advertising where we've done A-B tests um, with stock creatives and, and UGC creatives. And we found that on two tests, that UGC creatives outperform stock creatives by 10% uh, when it comes to ad CTR. So UGC photos get 10% higher ad CTR than, than stock creatives. And part of it is because you know, millennials, and, and really even going beyond millennials, we all, we all value trust, uh, and we all value authentic communication, which is, which is now possible with, these, with UGC photos. Um, and, and in terms of where these UGC photos can go, I know we, you know we have a varied audience in terms of e-commerce and brands. I think there are three primary vehicles. First is just like plain old content marketing. Right, the need for content is just accelerating. And the approach we are introducing in the market is, is, is hey, find the best real customer photos and, and reuse those photos in digital marketing, in social publishing and content marketing. The second is obviously e-commerce. 
And, and there are really a couple of ways. One is top funnel inspirational shopping experiences that could be built from these highly engaging customer photos that people actually want to scroll, scroll through and discover products through those imagery. But also bottom funnel visual testimonials, uh, which is really an analog to text reviews that communicate social proof. So imagine being on a product page and being able to see really happy customer photos showcasing your product in, in a variety of different lifestyle contexts. Um, and, and the third is you know, digital marketing and personalized creatives. Uh, so we're, we're, we're an Instagram ad advertising partner now, and we're actually helping a number of brands run uh, advertising campaigns on Instagram using UDC photos. Huh, enough said. Uh, I think uh, we've got great panelists. and. You know, no one really is actually, even we don't say or think that we are actually experts in this field. This is really new, and we're all testing and learning. We're learning from our customers, we're learning from all of you, and that's the spirit I want, I want us to have in this uh, event today, which is, which is learn. Thank you. Yeah. So nice to be here with all of you. Um, seriously, there are very few things that uh, the Pacora team en enjoys more than, than coming out to New York. Um, meeting, meeting with a lot of clients, um, meeting with a lot of great brands, uh, and there's just so much energy, palpable energy in the city, uh, and there's so much creative thinking going on, it's just so much fun to be a part of this. Um, so great to be with you uh, here today. Thanks to BDI, uh, Steve, thanks for planning, and uh, for, all the, uh, for all the people who don't know everyone at Pacora, definitely introduce yourselves. Um, it's a great bunch that we have here today. Um, so anyways, why are we here? Uh, here to talk about user-generated content, um, which has, as you guys know, and as you've heard from Sherrod here, uh, has continued to gain steam, gain momentum um, from brands of all kinds. Um, started out as more of a niche concept, and the way that it's kind of developed for Pacora is basically we had brands running a variety of Instagram promotions uh, that naturally created UGC on their behalf, because in order to be eligible to win, you had to create a photo. And what we started hearing from these brands is that they wanted uh, full rights to own these images, they wanted to categorize them, and they wanted to use them uh, in a variety of their marketing efforts because they were starting to learn, as we've continued to learn, um, that these UGC images connect on a very deep, uh, authentic level uh, with consumers, particularly millennials, uh, who've been marketed to on every possible medium from the day they've been born. They can, they can see authenticity and realize authenticity uh, when they see it. So uh, we have some great panelists up here, all from, from brands that uh, are just really fun brands. I've had, uh, I've had a great time um, getting to know each one of the brands. And I will say, for, uh, for some traditional um, spaces that have, that have not always been the most approachable, I think I told you guys this earlier, uh, three just really approachable um, great brands that are very easy to associate with. So why don't I let you guys introduce yourselves and, and uh, we'll go from there. Sure. You can't escape. Yep. Uh, I'm Dawn Ferguson, <laughs> Director of Social Media at Century 21 Department Store, not the real estate, the clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren Frankel, CRM and Email Manager at Alex Anani. Um, Logan Lee, CEO and founder of the most serious wine mm -hmm. uh, club ever, Wine Awesomeness. <laughs> Exactly, perfect. So why don't we start with a very simple question. Uh, how did you guys get into, yeah, you're fine. Anybody want it? Bring it past around. Uh, whatever. <laughs> uh, so yeah, very simple prompt to start. How did you guys initially pull the trigger on starting to use UGC? Why don't we start with Lauren? Oh, okay. Yeah, um, put you on the so spot. we started UGC in 2013, so we were very early. And the reason we did that was because through social media, we have a huge following and we saw the value in um, our customers regramming and retweeting all everything that we posted. So we really wanted to make it organic, authentic content. And we thought that we could do so by having the customers um, update pictures of their own charmed arm. Because I don't know if you guys are familiar with Alex and Ani, but I'm not really doing a good job right now. But we are, we are a jewelry accessories brand and people wear... Um, bracelets up to here. So some people are wearing 10 to 12 bracelets at a time. So we really wanted the consumers to be able to showcase that. Um, it's really great for us because people tell their story when they showcase that since all of our jewelry has meaning. So it allowed the customers to show the picture and also tell their story. Great, Logan. I think uh, a little bit similar. So we just noticed we really care about the millennial customer. Millennials are on the cusp of being the largest wine drinking generation ever, but we don't really feel like anybody's building a brand for that audience. 
And we just started noticing people doing different things with our box. It's a bright neon blue box, so it's highly, uh, it, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of photography around and shared around the web. And we noticed that cats were like getting, living in these boxes as, as one of these things is just crazy. People were building fortresses out of the boxes. So we took a lot of those ideas and actually designed the box and put in the bottom of the box four different ways to recycle it. And number one being let your cats live in it and then tied a hashtag to it, which is wine all the time. And um, just kind of really try to push that buzz in a really authentic and fun way that wasn't too serious. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. uh, our, so our story is a little less exciting, but um, Century 21 department store were very new to social media. They weren't doing much of it. Um, until about a year and a half, two years ago when I joined the company. So um, for us, we're, we're newer in the field, but we believe in it in a huge way. I think that in the last few years, we're really seeing this shift in the fashion and retail industry um, from this very aspirational Vogue magazine, beautiful high-end shoots to like UGC, right? And I think what's even funny is that our photo shoots now are being inspired by UGC. Like, we look at, you know, Food 52, I think is a great example. Similar, like, you know, we, all of the imagery is inspired by what we've seen by users. So it's no longer this high end, you know, model, like in this high end, like in Iceland in front of a glacier. It's, you know, a, a girl at a table snapping her, you know, clutch next to her sunglasses and her brunch. And that's um, sort of where we're really seeing our content strategy evolve on social. Awesome. So, uh, Sherrod talked a little bit about the kind of qualitative value of UGC in terms of connecting on an emotional level with these images. Um, and I'm interested to hear from you guys uh, more so on, just because you're three very unique brands and different brands, uh, what sorts of results have you seen already from UGC and, and what sorts of results do you hope to see as you continue to use UGC throughout marketing? You can go. Um, yeah. So on our product detail pages, we have we pull in um, all UGC images, and we think and people who interact with the UGC images, they are twice as likely to convert than people who don't interact with it, wow. um, because as you can see, like a bracelet just by itself on a product detail page, it's so much better on a wrist with mm -hmm. the other bracelets. You can see how you can stack it. You can see how it looks with the other bracelets. So it's really important to us to showcase how it really looks on an average human instead of just a model photography or just a product shot with no. 3D or it just looks flat. So it's really important for us. It also helps increase the AOV because if you're looking at a picture with the bracelet on it, you're gonna be like, oh, it looks really good next to that bracelet. I'll, I'm gonna purchase other bracelets with it. So that's also an important aspect. So you said that, uh, that buyers are, or consumers are two times more likely to convert and higher AOV. Yes. Wow. Yeah. That's it's all about stacking. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, Logan? Yeah, I, 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 one way that we use UGC is within our marketing, and we do uh, a competition each month since we're a monthly subscription. And we produce this pretty cool, I think it's really cool, print magazine that goes along with the six wines that we pick. And on the back is the Instagram winner with the best, the best photo. Uh, we literally put it there, and whoever wins um, gets their, their next box for free. But that really drives, actually strategically what we're doing, is it really drives our referral program, which is members signing up members, which is about 20% of our, uh, our new customer Huge. base each month. So it's a way to organically kind of push acquisition. And uh, it's been, been really successful. We use uh, a, uh, a program called, it's called Talkable now, it used to be called Curebit, but it really drives the kind of the, the, share, the sharing in the sense that we get refer referrals from our members signing up members, mm -hmm. but um, it's really the actual photography and the content that's pushing the referral. So uh, do you select the winner yourself every month, or is that more of a crowdsource thing? We, are, we have a pretty small lean team, and we'll kind of every month kind of play around. around with it. Yeah. But um, sometimes it's just an abundant winner. Um, several right. times there have been photo. It's always something ridiculous <laughs> with an animal. Um, and our, our customer base is just hilarious. <laughs> They've won in, they built, because <laughs> there goes the microphone. Mic, yeah. um, um, there it is. Too many mics. <laughs> but, um, uh, this awesome customer in Denver built a fortress out of wine awesomeness boxes for a dog. And wow. that's just like automatic incredible. winner. <laughs> automatic winner. You're gonna you just can't beat that. The next no. month she took a photo of her dog reading the magazine, oh, the photo of the wow. photo. Never gonna pay for a bottle of wine in your life. So, wow. yeah. so it's definitely uh, you can really, really push engagement in a smart way that also moves the moves the needle for the business. Right. <clears throat> Watch out, I'm entering next month. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have a cat. 
Um, yeah. no. uh, so in terms of the results we're kind of looking at right now with UGC um, is we're seeing it from our social channels. So we're looking at traffic driving into the site um, and if we're able to send any increased traffic. Um, and we definitely see, as I mentioned, we're shooting uh, photos that look are sort of inspired by UGC. So they're our own UGC, I would call it. Um, and we're seeing from those and our existing UGC um, great amount of traffic and often more clicks. Um, to the site of, over other content. So that's really exciting. Um, in the future, we definitely plan to integrate better on site. We're replatforming right now, so once that's done, um, we'll get you know more dynamic content on the homepage and emails we've been talking about with right. Picora. Um, and product detail page is a little lofty for us because of our inventory uh, model is a very opportunistic. Yeah. Um, but we're really excited to get those feeds in and get people shopping the gallery on site too. So you guys have a, had basically had so much success with UGC that it's you're not only using UGC, you're actually modeling your stock photography off of that UGC. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, next question is more so around uh, critical mass of UGC. Obviously, you're not going to derive much value if you don't have any content. So I wanted each of you guys to just speak very briefly on uh, how you encourage the creation of UGC, how you gather that content in. Uh, Don, we'll go right back to you. <laughs> How you gather it? So, so use of I know you guys encourage search. it through C twenty one style, etc. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah um, so to get people to um, join the UGC party, yes. uh, we use hashtag C twenty one style, um, which is you know really like you can do so market in so many ways post trigger or post purchase triggered emails. So thanks for your purchase. You know once you get your box, uh, take a photo and share using hashtag C twenty one style for a chance to be featured on our website. Um, that's one of our biggest uh, call to action places. We also have little cards. We hand those out with our um, stylists in, in stores. So we have a you know one on one styling program that you can go into the stores and have a personal shopper. Um, so they message it for us mm -hmm. um, with their clients directly. And then of course on social, um, email, ecom, sort of you know we try to hit our customer at every touch point um, to really make sure that they engage post purchase. Mm -hmm. That's great. So we do it a lot through emails. So our ha our main hashtag is Charmed Arms. So we really do a lot of stacking emails, trying to teach our customer how to stack, what to stack, what looks good together. So in all of those emails, we'll use hashtag Charmed Arms. We'll bring in a few user-generated content pictures, show them how to stack. We'll lead it, the, um, it will lead directly to the gallery on our website, showing them the different hashtags that we have. We also use hashtag Alex and Ani on all of our Instagram photos and pictures, mm -hmm. so to give the customer how to do it that way. We also are planning on doing package inserts, depending on what you purchase. Yeah. So um, small inserts in the card, in the box of the card, we will um, put hashtag charmed arms on it, or if you're buying rings, layering with the capital R-I-N-G. So we try to do it a few different ways. Um, we're also trying to bring it into, as she said, the post-purchase and um, our transactional emails, mm -hmm. which I think will definitely generate a lot of revenue from that, and also browse abandonment emails. So also from browse abandonment, we're trying to bring in the UGC. So whether they were looking at that photo, we can show them how that looks with other photos and other products to really um, get them to buy it and then after hashtag it. That's great, and I think I saw a few prompts on the site to share photos as well. Yeah. Um, but I think what you're talking about there is basically just a, an overall corporate effort to encourage the use of UGC, uh, make sure that people understand what the hashtag is, what the common hashtag is, um, and then just continue to, to grow it from there. We also have um, specific hashtag sweepstakes, so yeah. we um, these are more content-based, so these aren't necessarily to get users to upload pictures of their charmed arms, but each season, our um, CEO and founder, Carolyn, really has a main message. So we take that message, like this season it's giving, um, whether it's our CBD um, chat or our um, mobile app where we gave to the breast cancer awareness, it's all about giving. So our um, hashtag is positively gifted. So we're doing a sweepstakes where people can upload photos. It's very broad, but how they give during the holidays, who, what they get during the holidays, how they share the holiday spirit with each other. So it's really just trying to um, have them upload pictures of themselves to generate content in general. And we mm -hmm. have a gallery on our website that hosts all the images. And we did it also with our Mother's Day sweepstakes. We got over 
um, like I think 5,000 submissions with you and your mom or you and your mother figure and that whole gallery generated over $50,000. So we kind of bring the content aspect in it and then the selling aspect comes next. So it's not so always promotional. Awesome. And Logan, I think you told me that uh, you guys use emails a lot to encourage the creation of UGC as well, as well as some hashtags. And I think kind of out of like getting bigger picture out of just like nuts and bolts execution, I think why UGC is so important it's not good enough just to like have a website anymore. I think it's you need to have to build a right. community and show that your brand stands for something, cares for something. And and for us, wine is like this super kind of it's the weirdest thing. It's just grapes, but you're kind of afraid to ask a question at a bar about it. So that's right. why we built this hashtag wine all the time. And we will we'll, we'll even get submissions to what kind of content should we create. And we have this mm -hmm. this guy Christian, one of our wine curators, and he will do we do a video every Wednesday of it could be a submission that right. he's going to come and like show you how to decant wine, but maybe in a blender. So do something a little bit ridiculous, but you learn something. Don't take yourself too serious, but building that community so it's two ways yeah. instead of just the brand trying to achieve something through a tactic. I think is uh, just a, a more interesting way that we should all think about it. Got it. Uh, that's great. Whoops, I'm stepping on this cord. Uh, so I think with, with anything um, from the brand side, it, the, oftentimes the most difficult step is just starting, just getting from zero to one, just starting to uh, gather UGC, to promote UGC. Um, so I wanted to, what I wanted to ask you guys, just to help people out in the room who might not necessarily be doing much with UGC, uh, is basically, do you guys look at other brands for inspiration on UGC? Do you kind of trailblaze and, and come up with new concepts yourself? Um, interested to, to hear how um, you know, how you view that. Why don't we? Who? Who should we start with this time? Let's start with Let's start with Lauren. Oh, great. Oh, um, great. <laughs> so we do a combination of all things. I know one brand that we um, looked at. I don't know if any of you are from Coach, but they just they did this really cool Coach Around the World campaign that was kind of basically it was a more content driven campaign than um, a promotional campaign. So we looked at that as to help with our Mother's Day campaign and really just like see how we can really integrate it to our website, build an, a whole new gallery for the campaign, but also make it more content heavy than product push, 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 like I said before. Mm. So we really look at other brands, but we also strategize internally. Carolyn, the CEO, like I mentioned, she really has a vision for each season. So she looks to us to really see how we can connect that with our customers and really have them share back with us what we're sharing with them through the collections and what each product means. That's great. What about you, Logan? I know it all starts um, with you. Not well, for wine, I think we are pretty trailblazing. I mean, we have a ridiculous name and we have a lot of fun, but I think um, Previous panelists, uh, the infatuation. Those guys um, built a really large Instagram audience um, and built something that was authentic because I think they one they really cared about food. And if you guys haven't checked it out, the infatuation is my guide to finding new restaurants, uh, especially around New York, but they're in several cities. Mm -hmm. And they just kind of hustled more and built a community, and mm -hmm. it was super successful around a hashtag and users kind of being able to go back and forth. Got it. What about you, Don? Um, one, I mean, of course, we look at brands across the board, too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that a lot of the younger um, retailers, Alex and Ani, I think, is a great example. Um, you know, the Nasty Gals, the Forever 21s do really well with mm -hmm. um, UGC. Um, but also, you know, one, one account I have to call out, Bloomingdale's, if you look at their, you know, along the lines of what I've been talking about with sort of creating our own UGC, um, they do really well. And, mm -hmm. you know, they'll feature um, models. You never see her face. Um, she goes all over New York City, does everything that we're all doing in our personal lives anyway, right. like picnicking in Central Park in the summer, um, you know, going to see new murals and sculptures and those kinds of things around the city. So I really love what they've been doing right now, and we're really looking at that a lot. That's great. I think that makes a lot of sense. So. You guys are obviously pretty far along collectively in terms of how you think about UGC and how you deploy it. Um, but being as far along as you are, I'd love to know uh, some of your upcoming plans to use UGC and, and how you kind of uh, plan on integrating it more. Uh, let's start with Dawn this time. We'll go right back <laughs> yeah. to you. Yeah, so um, we have a hashtag gallery on the site. I mentioned mm. we're sort of promoting it in all different ways. Um, but really, our next step is is 
integrating those dynamic feeds. So having a footer on our homepage that always, and this isn't being ahead of the game, This, I mean, everybody's been sort of doing this. We're just trying to figure it out for our, like I said, opportunistic buying model. So we'll you know, go to Prada and we'll get 10 pieces from Prada. We won't have a full size run, but we'll have like, you know, if you've shopped in our stores, you know how it is. So working with that online is a lot trickier, matching UGC to it because those pieces sell out fast. Um, so we're sort of working through that, but I think for us, we're really, we see UGC fitting into the site um, on those category browse pages um, and on the homepage, and like I said, an email too. So having those footers dynamically update so they're um, the current content and so it's easier on our team to make it happen is really our next step. Yeah, that's awesome. What about you, Logan? I was already texting our paid acquisition guys <laughs> if we're using UGC content in our ads so we can get that 10%. Uh, better CTR because yeah. something that's, I think for I think a lot of e-commerce brands getting paid acquisition to really work in a way that has ROI, a you know, piece of that puzzle is the mm -hmm. CTR. And if you can jack up the CTR a little bit and then convert those users, it's really meaningful. I mean, you can just do the math. So right, that's one way we uh, we want to keep doubling down on what we do. But that was a really idea that I think we should play around with. Totally, yeah. So I myself have, I myself have been in social media for uh, for about what seven or eight years now, and, and um, to be able to talk about the impact of um, you know, social imagery in a quantitative sense is, is obviously very refreshing for me. Um, it's not all, not, not all about likes and engagement anymore. Uh, images like this that are being created primarily on Instagram, but also on other social channels, uh, are driving real results that, that uh, anyone in an organization would care about. What about you, Lauren? So we just launched our mobile app in October, and um, we do use UGC on the product detail pages on the app, but we're trying to explore other ways we can use UGC on our app and how we can really um, take advantage of the app and the blog and all the content in the app and really integrate UGC into that. Um, our app is like 50% content and then 50% e-commerce, so it's really about um, personalization, gift guides, learning about yourself, learning about who you're buying for, really exploring the meaning of all of our symbols. So really trying to figure out how UGC fits in there. Yeah. And we're also working with our ESP to, to come up with an API call to automatically um, place UGC images in all of our transactional emails. Got and it. just trying to figure out ways to get more UGC in different ways other than package inserts, emails, and Instagram. I think that's great, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, Pacora just recently started powering Instagram ads, so I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, bring up the subject. Um, the reason that we decided to get into the ads game to begin with is because we started with the belief that UGC would be very powerful and very, uh, very native to the general experience. Um, and I think a big reason why a lot of people have, have seen Instagram ads as a great success is because they're really not intrusive at all. Um, and now, with uh, obviously with Facebook's integration through Instagram, um, they're feeding you content that you actually want to that you actually want to interact with, and that you've shown some level of interest in. Um, would love to hear from each of you guys just how you've thought about Instagram ads, if you're planning on running them, if you already are running them, um, just your general overall thoughts. Uh, we'll start with Logan. I mean, not really. I mean, yeah. I think um, for us, I mean. We haven't, I think there's a lot of interesting things you can do with Instagram. I think driving, it's driving traffic off of Instagram is something people are still trying to figure out. Totally. Um, so we would not probably put a lot of money, like capital to work there. Right mm -hmm. now, I mean, we're always interested in learning more, but um, we definitely want to spend time there and build our audience there. But totally. um, uh, no plans in the immediate future, but always interested to learn. So For sure. I'm sure you have some, uh, <laughs> Uh, a good pitch. Of course, yeah. Uh, Lauren, how do you guys think um, about Instagram ads? We definitely, we don't do them now. It's definitely on our roadmap, I think, in the next six months. Mm -hmm. I definitely think it's going to be beneficial for us, but we have not done anything yet. Okay. But we do plan to. Uh, do you plan on using UGC in those in those ads, or are you just going to A-B test? What's the, uh, you I know think, what the approach is going to be? Um, we're all about A-B testing to see yep. what works best, so I definitely think we will A-B test, look at the results, wait a few months, and then decide what we're going to move forward with. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. What about uh, Century we're 21? We're same. Doc? We're not um, advertising on Instagram yet, but uh -huh. I believe I think Instagram is number one, the most important channel right now in all of social. Sure. Unless you're under 23, and I think Snapchat trumps yes. trumps you, but yep. um, it, which is growing and growing too. But um, yeah, we really believe in Instagram. We think it's where people's attention is right now, 100. Mm -hmm. percent um, And so we're just working to get the budget to make it happen. For so sure. yeah, we're Constant it's on our roadmap right? too. Yeah. Yep. 
Okay, great. Well, um, we've covered some great subjects. I feel like uh, I'm becoming more and more intimately familiar with, with each of your brands, and it's, it's certainly fun for me. Um, but uh, for all these guys, just wanted to give you the opportunity to leave everyone with, with just one thought uh, specific to UGC um, to kind of take home with them here today. Um, who should we start with? We'll start with Lauren. Oh, God. Okay, so um, my thought would be it's really brand specific. So we look at other brands doing X and Y and they're doing this, but we also found out a lot of things that other brands are doing that we tried doesn't really work for our, um, our brand. So I would say definitely test a lot before making a final decision on what to move forward with. Like, for example, we tested removing the UGC widget from our homepage and we t AB tested that for about a month. Um, and we saw the results that when it was there, um, it was better, but so a lot of brands don't have it on there, so we wanted to test mm -hmm. and see if it worked for our brand, if we really needed it there. Got it. Uh, Don? Yeah. Uh, I think that's awesome. I totally agree on testing. Um, I would say for us, too, I think the really, I, I mean, I guess it's my theme today, but I would say really think about what what is UGC, what does it mean to you as a brand? And I mean, even the conversations we're having, like wine awesomeness, awesomeness, it sounds like most of your content is what I'm talking about too. It's like UGC, right? It's, it's this stuff, you know, I think it comes back to, you know, customers are no longer want to be marketed to, right? We, I mean, ever, it goes back to when TiVo first came out and we could fast forward commercials. Customers aren't listening anymore. They listen to peers, right? They try, you know, there's that statistic everybody throws out that like 90% of um, people, you know, trust peer recommendations when only like 10, 14% trust ads. So, you know, for us, it's all about activating a sort of CDC or customer to customer marketing strategy, right? Um, we're trying to get other people to talk about us, to give you endorsements because they'll listen, you listen to them, your friends, more than you listen to us as a brand. So going back to that and, and just creating a brand lifestyle on social media that's about a lifestyle. It's about a community. It's about the people behind the brand. And it's less about, you know, this aspirational, distant, um, you know, thing that we can't relate to. Um, but think about it, you know, like that, what it sort of is at the end of it all. Yeah. What about you, Logan? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think for a long time, marketing was like an ads were the price of admission to watch what you actually wanted to watch. So why not just make your ads or your advertisements in a way that people care about them and want to watch them? So I think that is a smart way to think through it. And I think UGC, though, is like a really cool way, an interesting way for you to actually listen. How do customers use your product? And that is going to bring you to a lot of insights that you may have not really understood. I mean, you can mm -hmm. have the, the best surveys and the best of intentions, but you may not even realize what somebody's doing with what you're delivering to their doorstep or what's your, what they're mm -hmm. finding in the store. So I think it's a really great way to listen and, um, mm -hmm. and, and, and really kind of internalize those insights. Yeah, I think that's great. Uh, I think my, my final thought would be um, that what we've already seen through our own research and through industry research is that UGC is incredibly valuable. Uh, you just have to be creative in terms of how you actually go about deploying it. Um, and a common theme up here has been, uh, has been testing, uh, understanding your audience, uh, and continuing to make strides there. So um, simple premise, UGC is valuable, uh, and there's a lot of ways to find value while using UGC. So I think that's it. Thank you so much, guys. Awesome. Uh, this was a ton of fun. Yeah. Uh, I hope the food out there is good. Yeah. We got all kinds of wires. Oh yeah, what, yeah. Why don't we do, why don't we do a couple questions? Uh, Jason, can you uh, can you walk around the room and do all that? Yeah, it was specific, right? <laughs> Steve's got it. So, Q and A. Let's do a little Q and A. If you could just please speak loudly, state your name and your company, and then your question. Please panel. Perfect. I planted a few easy questions in the audience, and now's your time to shine. <laughs> Yep. Sure. Go ahead. Oh. Um, my name is Kelly Pomeroy. I'm from Stella. It's a skincare brand for babies and moms. And I know UGC is so different. It's unique to each brand and each industry. Like fashion, it, it makes a lot of sense because you're pairing them together and it makes, you know, completes the outfit. But just curious if you've seen any good examples in skincare um, or just brands outside of fashion that might like be using it really well and 
I, I can't think of any brands off the top of my head, but I would tell you it's all about tutorials, right? Show people why they need your product. And, you know, I think a good example, uh, one that I love or have loved for a long time is Whole Foods. And they've always, like, you know, you go on their site with Instacart, right, which is the guy that'll go pick it up for you and bring it to your house, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, but you could... I think it was through Instacart one. You go on their site, you look up recipes, right? They give, they show me how to use the product. They show me what I need to make something amazing. And then I can just add to cart and put it on. So I think, you know, for me with skincare, you know, show me what, how do I need it? Like the weather sucks outside. My lips are chapped. Like what do I do to prep my skin and get the, you know what I mean? What can I do overnight that is really helpful? So like you know, you have 15 seconds on Instagram where you can show a great video and, and give people a tutorial or answer fan questions or, you know, that that's where I would yeah, kind of I start. think it's like, to add on to that, it's all about showing value. Like, I think yeah. brands, like we do a ton of content and wine is, it's more set up to do um, a ton of content because people use it in pairings, people want to learn about these different varietals, it's tied to travel. But I think we try not to sell too hard, and we just always want to provide value and really great content for you to learn about it, even if you do not sign up for the box. And I think no matter what your, your, your category is, there are ways to show immense value, and I think tutorials would probably really crush it. And then you would figure out a way where that engagement happens, and then you can probably learn that feedback from how users are using it, um, which would probably lead to some sort of UGC strategy, I would think. Yeah. Another way that we've thought about it is basically what we've realized is that when you have great UGC um, associated with different product pages, different, different SKUs, whatever it might be, um, similar to how text reviews are, are done with kind of the more rational side of your brain, um, these UGC images are functioning more as like an emotional um, testimonial to the brand. So it's almost like a visual review versus a text review. Um, so in that sense, um, I don't think it necessarily has to be fashion at all. It can just be any product um, in which that last kind of punch of, of peer validation is valuable. I definitely also think, I know I see a lot of hotel brands or JetBlue is doing a good job at this, is creating the experience through UGC and having um, hashtag sweepstakes or uploading hashtags, whether it's a video or a picture of you and somebody else at the hotel. It's really, it really gives, like you said, the visual yep. of it instead of just like a text review which is good. So. Sure. And liberating, I'm trying to think too, there was a brand that did like a no makeup campaign and they had like some celebrities involved, bloggers, all yeah. these people that you know, and I was seeing them post like these no makeup selfies and so you could do something really cool. You know, I'm guessing you have a moisturizer for your face. And I'm guessing it makes people look glowy and amazing. And so encouraging your, you know, mom bloggers, partnering, you know what I mean, with some influential people. And then creating a hashtag, something like no makeup selfie or whatever it is to sort of liberate your fan mm -hmm. base could also be fun. That's great. Thank you. Sure, you talked to uh, what kind of uh, rights or legalities are around UPC. Yeah, very common question. Um, so what we've built into uh, our platform is basically the ability to uh, message that individual. It's actually done through a comment on their piece of Instagram media. And so long as they're a public user, um, what you're asking them, you can customize the message uh, and say, hey, love this photo. We'd love to feature it on the site. Respond with you know, yes to Nordstrom um, to grant us rights. Okay. And um, so, yeah, certainly I've dealt with some, some very difficult legal teams on this. Uh, primarily the financial institutions are the difficult ones. Um, but uh, we've been able to overcome that hurdle every time. And the rights requests are, are uh, granted to the brand on, on average about 75 to 85 percent of the time, which is fantastic. Yeah, good question, though. Very important. Very yeah. important. Uh, I, I'll come right back to you. I think you had your hand up first. Okay, it's a continuation of that. Is that same social channel, or can you use it across your site, email, et cetera, which the rights usually do? Right? right. So typically, you would specify um, what you'd use, what you'd like to use the image for. Um, but if you wanted complete rights to it, so you wanted to use it in ad copy and then on a billboard, um, you would just specify that you'd have complete rights to it, and. and uh, via Instagram rules that does grant you complete rights to those images, just like we've, you create it yourself. We've also, sorry to interrupt, we've also yeah. added a disclaimer to our privacy policy on the website. Um, mm. And then in our hashtag gallery, there's like a terms and conditions call out that links you to the privacy policy. Yep. Really, really important. And in there that has, you know, legalese that says we have the ability to use your image in perpetuity, mm. wherever we want, whatever, whatever. 
Um, but you, you don't want to piss people off. So much of social media is PR at the same time. Right. So I think it's really important to, even though you have that note on your site and you're sort of protected by law, um, you want to just do the night, you know, you don't want someone to see their image in an ad on Instagram and be like, what the, like, that's yeah. me. There you, yeah. you know, you just, you know, when in doubt, ask. Yeah, I guess well said. So you, you spoke about quantification um, of the tactics. So talk to me a little bit more about platforms and what, what top KPIs you're looking at and, and sort of you know how you're growing into what those top KPIs really are for your corporations. So what platforms are you using and, and how do you manipulate those day-to-day -day shifts? Which social analytics, platforms? Yeah, analytics. Oh, analytics. Um, we use Core Metrics um, and Google Analytics. Um, we append, I'm not sure if I'm answering this correctly, but we append all of our links with tracking codes. So we see anything from the content we post. Um, we look at all of that, you know, like UPT, AOV, all of the data on the site, and we compare it to all of our other inb inbound marketing channels. Um, we also, i um, trying to think. Um, what are your top KPIs that you look at? For overall social? Oh gosh. For, for, for this particular concept, for UGC. Oh, for UGC. Sort of like, oh, what, what, what really makes me invest that much more? Yeah. And you utilize that. Um, for us, it's traffic. As a marketing department, we look, we see us as marketers as the people that are getting people in the door and on the site. Um, you know, once they're in the door or on the site, it's the merchant's job to have great killer product that converts. Um, so we do look at conversion and sales always, but um, to judge the quality of our traffic, also things like page sessions and you know bounce rate to kind of understand that it's quality. Um, but traffic is number one. Our sort of goal as a marketing. Uh, department and of course engagement rate and all those things on social yeah. we have our own sort of KPIs I would say for us on the PDP it's about conversion rate PDP abandonment just uh, a PDP page with UGC um, have less abandonment than PDP without it does it increase AOV that's on the PDP I feel like for the content sweepstakes we run it's just about creating um, a, a social community. It's not more about how much revenue did it drive, how many submissions did we get. It's kind of like having the fans tell their own story and giving them a way to communicate with our brand and allowing us to hear them. So it's not more much about KPIs. It's about creating that whole social brand to allow our, the fans to feel comfortable enough to share stuff with us. Yeah, so I think we're uh, much more early stage than you guys, but I think for e-commerce companies, a lot of brands uh, lose the way when they don't really, really know the metrics of what is their cost per acquisition of a customer and what is that customer worth. So no matter what the channel is, if it's a paid acquisition strategy on Facebook or UGC or referral, uh, we're really big into building um, building our email audience. Um, so I think there's a lot of like sexy things like engagement and all this cool shit that everybody wants to talk about, mm -hmm. but if you don't know what it costs you to a customer and what they're worth, None of the other stuff really matters, and I think it's it takes some discipline to be really, really focused on that core for an e-commerce company, especially in the beginning, to know those metrics hard so you know where to put your money to work. Yeah, I think very commonly for us, it, it just basically comes down to lift. So what sorts of conversion rates were you seeing prior to having UGC on the site? Lauren touched on this. Um, how are Instagram ads with uh, stock photography with a white background or just stock photography, stock photography in general, how is that comparing? to the performance of UGC ads. So oftentimes it come down, comes down to lift. And kind of what I think Sherrod said in the beginning, the beginning yeah. comments, if you can up your CTR, then you should be able to lower your CPA. And yeah. that is just being focused on those core, those core metrics. That's a great point. And so further to what you were just talking about, have you seen any discrepancies between what's getting really great engagement on social media versus what's actually driving We notice a difference. Um, a lot of times it's it's the same, but we'll notice sometimes on a really great image. It's like I kind of mentioned before, if, you know, a food shot, right? Or something, you know, a clutch on a table with sunglasses. You know, that we see people, that, oh, I love it, and they engage with it, engagement's super high. But we post a Louis Vuitton bag or something, you know, a higher end, something that's more focused on the product, and people click through, the clicks are higher. So at the end of the day, it's like, like you said, engagement's fun and magical on social media, but you know, at the end of the day, my executive committee comes to me to drive sales and to drive traffic. So, um, so I love to see when the clicks are higher. 
It just depends. You got to test for what it is for you. Yeah. Okay. Haley. Um, we do a lot of um, user-generated content, but most of it lives within the channels. So, like, we push it out again on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook. Um, you guys mentioned some really great examples of taking it outside of social. More you were talking about posting it on the product pages. Um, Logan, you mentioned, like, using it as a way to organically drive um, so we created a template at Alex and Ani whenever we have hashtag sweepstakes. We um, there's a uh, the contest. There's a banner on the top. The winners, the how to enter this, um, the hashtag, everything about the sweepstakes. But at, at below that, it populates all of the uh, the entries. Obviously, we have to um, approve them first. So that's what we advertise out of the homepage of our website, and that's more of a content play so you can go to that sweepstakes page and see we did, for the mother's day one see it, people with pictures of their um mother figure so it's not necessarily it's just kind of how to interact with the brand not necessarily like i said pushing product but you can see the pictures you can um look at the captions see this people's stories and really just read about everybody else and it's just a good way to for people a place to come that's not the blog but it's it, you can read about the stories and really just touching images from people Great. You, covered, you guys covered everything, yeah. Let's go over here. So a couple of fun questions. How big is UGC? Yes. <laughs> I'm Gautam Kumar, work for Sprinkler, which is another social media platform. Um, my question is, two questions. One is, how big is UGC as a fraction of your overall social marketing? And then where do you see it going? My second question is what fraction of your UGC is video versus images? Yeah. That's a good question. question. Um, oh, man. I couldn't get the, the breakdown, but I think where you see it going is this overall effect of brands becoming more and more authentic. And I think that is something that everybody's trying to tackle the millennial, um, yep. and everybody's focused on that. And I think that is just brands I think, caring more, hustling more, and listening more. So it's kind of hard to quantify that, but I think you're going to see it. I mean, I've already said it a couple of times that. If you can drive click-throughs based on your ads being just better, whatever that, what, why they're better, is it, I don't actually really care. I think we, if we can drive traffic and do it in a way that's smart and authentic, that's going to be the most meaningful thing. Um, yeah, for us, we see it's really meaningful because we are an approachable brand. We're not this high-end brand that appeals to only a certain audience. We Many celebrities wear us. Beyonce, Michelle Obama was just wearing us. Britney Spears is gifting us. And every time we put a uh, post of the celebrity, it doesn't drive as much as many clicks or as much engagement as a simple picture of a charmed arm or somebody else's charmed arm. So we really see it, us moving forward in that direction. That's interesting. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, no, I, I think at a very simple level, seeing just about all of our brands continue to use UGC at a, at a higher and higher rate. It's often, oftentimes replacing things that they didn't even have the original intention of using UGC on. They've just seen such great performance in other areas that, you know, and it kind of led us to, to push UGC and Instagram ads as well. Um, so we kind of see it growing in that way. And I would add to that, just plan for it. So, you know, look at your, if you're talking about like the type of content or the amount of content I'm posting, what percentage is UGC? Right. I think, right? Yeah. If, I mean, if that's the case, what I say is plan for it because you have a, a merchandising strategy that, right? Like, so we have product that comes in at certain times. So UGC isn't going to always address that. Um, you know, so what, what do we do to kind of fill in and, and create content that looks like UGC? We seed it to bloggers, right? So, you know, incorporate um, blogger and influencer outreach into that strategy and have them, you know, send them product gifts or, you know, work out that relationship um, in exchange for some great content. And then it, it matches up with your merchandising strategy as well. I also, on that note, um, for all of you guys who have brick and mortar stores, we use a lot of our stores have their own Instagram and Facebook pages. So we use our stores to create UGC, especially for new products. And we have, when they're up on the website for only 24 hours, we want that UGC on them. So we have the stores Instagram on there or upload to Facebook or their Twitter with the hashtag and we can add that content to the directly to the PDPs. Yeah, that's great. Let's go over here. Hi, I'm Justine from Macy's. Um, we've been talking a lot about Instagram, but I wanted to get your point of view on Pinterest because 
like we work a lot with them, but just as your brands are very different than ours, so I just want to see like if you guys are doing anything. If not, why? If yes, what are you guys up to? I'm just interested because now that there's e-commerce on there, how does that affect everything? Because I think a lot of conversations like bring UGC on our e-commerce site, but now that e-commerce is leaving our sites and going to social, how does that affect your strategy? I'm just curious. Yeah so, yeah, so one thing I'll say is that from what we found, it's about 97% of all user-generated content in terms of imagery uh, is sourced from Instagram. Um, having said that, a lot of these high-quality UGC images end up living on brands' Pinterest boards and end up being some of their highest-performing boards uh, when it comes down to uh, the most important metrics that, that marketers typically look at, click-throughs, conversions on Pinterest. So I think there's a lot of like uh, cross-channel um, integrations with UGC, primarily sourced from Instagram originally, um, but it can certainly have great applications on Pinterest, for example. You guys want to touch on that? Um, yeah, yeah. Pinterest is um, interesting because I really feel like, and they admit to this too, that they're really shifting from being a social network to a search engine. And you know, while that's really powerful and amazing, I think that brands to be you know, it's really hard to reach your organic audience on Pinterest right now because of the algorithm following in the footsteps of Facebook. So look into doing a paid, for us in retail, it's huge, right? We see a ton of traffic. Make sure your site is optimized for Pinterest. So you've got pin and buttons on your PDP, you've got pin and buttons on all your content, um, and uh, you know, make sure people are driving back to Pinterest from you, um, but also putting all your product and your photos and your content on Pinterest because that's gonna give you more clicks back to the site. So it's really great, you know, optimize your captions for SEO um, so that people can click, you know, find, discover you and search. Um, that's where I really think Pinterest right now. And, you know, one of our customers is a large home decor retailer uh, and actually marks their product, uh, their top 10 products as such. So they use labels like top 10 mm. on other categories. That mm -hmm. is demonstrated yeah. a 2% conversion left when they do yeah. a new test. And I know Nordstrom in store, yeah. you can actually have I know they yeah. do a shelf of like most pinnable items, like in the store, so that's like totally yeah. omni. Um, so that's super cool. Like totally omni. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's take a, let's just take one more question. So, rhetoric. Okay. Um, make it right. good. What's that? So make it good. The last yeah, one. Yeah, this will be important. Right. No pressure. Like, uh, you know, awesome. Brad G, I'm a co-founder at Mantry, which is Man's Mantry. We do like a food of the month club deal with the guys. It's like Birch Box plus the guys. Plus the guys. Um, <laughs> my question for you. So looking forward, are there any budding new platforms that you have your eye on? Like, I mean, obviously Snapchat would be like a, a, a thought, but is there any other smaller sort of up and coming? I mean, this question goes for you guys as well. Uh, yeah. That you're keeping an eye on? What do you guys think? Where you stand, mm -hmm. Don? I know you mentioned Snapchat, Snapchat. of course. Yeah, yep. Snapchat is everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I don't even know if this is working. Okay. Um, for me, with retail, I see a lot of traffic come in from sites like Wanilo. Mm -hmm. So they're nothing new, but the Wanilo, the Polyvores, like those type, and I, a lot of them right. operate on affiliate models. Um, we see a good amount of like referring traffic mm -hmm. come from them. Um, Snapchat for us is like, it's old news in my head, but we're not on it yet because it's still getting older. So um, that's a big thing for me. And I really think Snapchat is bringing back the overall like authenticity of social media in general. Um, what else? Periscope, but that's kind of old news also yeah, now. That, yeah. So <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't say a specific platform, but I think really focusing on like the basics of making your product awesome and shareable and engageable then it's going to, uh, it's going to, you'll find those channels too. I mean, you'll see it in your analytics if you're paying attention. Um, but I think a lot of the focus shouldn't be necessarily on, hey, let's find the hot new thing. Let's make our companies and our product really, really great. And, and making your content better yeah, on your content. the existing channels. I mean that, wrapping that as yeah, well. So like like just driving value. Yeah, Instagram launches Boomerang, and right? So there's always these new apps that you can use to make your content even better. And I think that's what we're seeing is, you know, you have Snapchat, it disappears and deletes because it's not that beautiful and amazing of content. Mm -hmm. And that's what Instagram's become. It's like, you no longer just post an, eh, this random photo. It's like, I have to like right. edit it and make sure it's like perfect before I post, you know what I mean? So I think really focusing on, on content and 
and killing it at what you're doing. That's great. Can we get one more question? I think we probably could. Yep. Go ahead. Steve's saying yes. So, have, have any of you thought about Slack or Facebook Messenger or uh, chat platforms? I was at a conference, uh, a courts conference uh, yesterday or the day before, and I actually, I'm not a big Slack fan, and I G-chat and email are my go-tos, or a text me, um, but our tech team uses Slack and it's pretty effective, but at the conference, they set up Slack channels based on different topics that were covered throughout the day, and really drove people coming together to talk about those things, and I thought it was super smart. Interesting. Mm. We're big on the messengers. We don't... We don't let any tweet go unanswered, yes. so we have a huge awesome. social. Yeah, it's crazy. We have a huge social team. No matter what you say on Twitter, you know, we tweet back at you. We'll direct message you. We'll respond to you. Um, if you have an issue, we'll definitely get that taken care of. So we really try to answer our consumers and try to really personalize the messages for, to make a difference. So definitely things we're exploring. Um, one trend I've seen is like customer service companies. So we had somebody come to us that says, okay, we have this internal platform like dashboard that you use to answer all your customer service questions across any channel, and it responds to the customer in the app or channel that they prefer. So we can you know, respond, they could reach out to us however they do, and then we go into our dashboard, respond back, and it goes to their WhatsApp. You know, So I think it's about coming, going to the place your customer is and, and going out of your way to get to them as opposed to having them have to come out of their way to get to you, just to make it a better customer experience. And on that topic, I think it's really important to make sure that whoever's responding to them knows that they were they have been Facebook messaged yesterday, or they called customer service, or they emailed you yesterday, to have like all this information in one central database to really know that like they are continuously tweeting at you, they're continuously Facebook messaging you, so you can share the same message with them. and five different people who they're interacting with aren't telling them five different things. Great. <laughs> All right, one more. <laughs> okay. I'm Cynthia from <clears throat> HBC Digital, which is a six shared services group for Saks Fifth Avenue, Gordon Taylor, Angel Bay, Canada. So my question sort of piggybacks on that. How do you respond to negative or critical <clears throat> Um, user generated content, if someone has an issue with a store or, you know, with a product and they snap a photo and then, you know, they're tweeting at you. And then another question, how large is your team at Alex Nani? Um, so actually at Alex Nani, we, we hire, like for the holiday season, we'll definitely bring a few more social coordinators on staff because that is our busiest season. We want to be able to respond to the comp um, to the customers. So. Regarding the negativity, we are a positive energy brand. So even if a customer is cursing at us, even if they're screaming at us, we really respond like in the way that it, they, we would even if they were nice to us. We, we customer comes first. We try to make them happy. We are at a low price point. So if it means giving them a free bangle or doing something, giving them free shipping or whatever we need, we will do it just to make sure that that negativity doesn't really expand and that at the end of the day, the customer is happy and we go do anything for that. Yeah, I think the same thing. I think you sometimes owning the mistake will turn a screw up or whatever it is into something positive. And I think not everything is going to be 100% perfect. So owning up to mistakes, apologizing, and figuring out the best way to make it right will, I, to me, it's just the way to go. Yeah, we haven't seen too many, thank goodness, and I hope I'm not jinxing it, yeah. but we haven't seen like UGC uh, or like people hijacking our hashtags for bad customer service, but thankfully, um, but I think moderation is key. So if you have a hashtag gallery where, you know, you mentioned it earlier, we're, we're always moderating the posts that we send. So you never have a campaign, like if you're at a live event, for example, and you have a feed of all the tweets on the board, you're moderating those. You're not letting them go live because then people will take advantage of that. We also have somebody approving every single image that goes live on our PDP is on our website, so it won't even make it to the website unless somebody hits approve. Yeah. So, which is important, I think, because we've had some very Essential. inappropriate photos that if they did make it to the website, <laughs> I think it would have been a bigger problem. Uh, I can only imagine. Yeah. yeah. 
Hi, I'm, I'm Ingrid with the Chelsea Film Festival, and I'm, I just, I'm just curious, how many social media coordinators do you have? Because you didn't really respond. Okay, um, <laughs> I don't know the number, but exactly. But I definitely, oh man, um, I definitely, I think it's about eight, and they all, they all focus on different channels. So one will be two, a couple are on Twitter, a couple focus on Instagram, a couple will focus on like Pinterest or Polyvore, which is a really important one to us. So they all have their main focuses that it really helps um, us. And we also always have somebody on staff. So on nights and weekends, they will be on staff to answer those tweets if they need to, um, to be on call if we have anything happen, especially over the holidays when Black Friday, Cyber Monday, when things are absolutely crazy, they're definitely there to um, answer anything. And I've been with a lot of small brands, but I would say, and I've been with big brands too, take advantage of the resources you have. If you if you don't have the ability to hire eight social media coordinators, don't you quote me on that. <laughs> you have a customer service department, right? Yeah. Train them and show, so yeah. um, in a past life, I was with Hot Topic, which is a millennial pop culture brand for the like really, really young, highly engaged customers. And so we had a big customer service department. We had all hours of the night and day, weekend, everything, there we had somebody logged in and answering questions on Facebook and Twitter directly. Um, so assign, you know, work with the resources that you have. People, you know, your all of your customer service, your marketing, everybody lives and breathes your brand, right? They all love it and they can speak to it. You know, identify the people within your company that can help and source it. Yeah, our CEO sometimes, our yeah. old CEO when I first started was answering messages on Facebook and Twitter. So we really don't think anybody's um, above it. So whenever anybody needs help, we definitely all step up and answer anyone. I get every tweet. What? <laughs> I get every tweet. Oh. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But train them first. <laughs> yeah. Our customer service team crushes it. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much. Um, cool. And thank you, guys.